Welcome to our city council meeting. Happy May Day, as someone said to me earlier. Thanks for being here. Uh, we have uh, all council members representative and our mayor and an attorney and Jennifer. Thank you and everyone for being here. We will. Um, did you say something, Jan? Oh, okay. <laughs> we will uh, begin by having our Pledge of Allegiance. I've asked Kim Sorensen, who is the uh, director for our uh, parks and, and rec center, if you'd do that first, Kim. Those that are able, please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Kim. Uh, approval of uh, minutes and unscheduled and a special recognition. I'll get to that in just a second, but we have one right here. Uh, our uh, state senator, Brian Zender, is here today. Brian, thank you for being here. Very much. Appreciate your your rep on the hill and and uh, how was your how was that forty five days for you? Forty five days of five hundred and thirty four bills and I'm still smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I was very privileged to be up there. I had four of my own bills passed and it was just an incredible privilege. I was I was blown away by the the true commitment and the desire of all of our elected officials in this state to really serve well. And uh, that was very touching to me, and I had so much fun that I thought, well, I'll throw my hat in the ring and go for re-election in the fall. So, um, God willing, I'll be back in the fall after November and continue to serve this district well and still serve the great citizens of Murray. It's a special place in my heart for this community. So thank you for Thank you. We appreciate all you did for our city. And boy, after 45 days of that, he said it was fun. So that was that's impressive. <laughs> Thanks again for being here. We appreciate it. Okay, now we'll go on to uh, uh, 5.3 special recognition, uh, Murray City Council Employee of the Month, and I will present that. And Tim, is Tim? Yep, yeah, there's Tim. Tim and Steve. We're glad to have you here, Steve. Thank you. Um, come on up here, and okay. Tim, come on up. Don't hang back. Tim's so shy, he doesn't like to talk or anything. And you, isn't that true, Steve, that Tim's so shy? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, we're excited to be able to present this to uh, Steve Reed today. Steve, you've been with the city 11 years? Yes. 11 years. And how long have you been with the building department? Um, 11 years. So the whole time with the building department. Well, Tim has uh, recommended you for this. And as a, a council, we just uh, like to show appreciation. And uh, so we started this program about five or six years ago. And so there's a certificate from the council, and we'll have your name back there on the plaque. And then we have a $50 gift card for you, and so we appreciate that. And uh, but, but Tim's going to come forward. But for, before he does that, from the council, uh, we give a, our appreciation and for all that you do for the city. So thank you. Well, I want to just uh, say a few things about Steve, and uh, he's very well deserving of this honor. Uh, Steve is, has worked for the building division, as he mentioned, for 11 years. And the interesting thing about Steve is uh, he has such a great understanding of building code, uh, and he's been our building official now for just a year. Um, we hired him as our building official. He was a plans examiner prior to that. And he took this position in a very challenging time. And the challenges um, have included the, the turnover, turnover that we've had in the division. We've had a number of people that have moved on to other opportunities. And the, this, those opportunities have come about because of the competitive nature of, of these positions all across the valley and actually the state. 
And with that, he's had to shoulder the load of being the building official plus uh, the plans examiner. We still have not filled the plans examiner position, so he's really doing two jobs and has done that uh, for quite some time now. I've been in a number of meetings with him. In fact, I'll just mention this real quickly. Uh, my pr presentation will only be another 20 minutes. <laughs> but um, real quickly, I, I was in a meeting with him uh, about a year and a half ago, and it was with a number of architects from San Francisco looking at a very complicated project that we had here in Murray. And I remember there were a lot of very difficult questions that were being asked and discussed, and I was sitting there and I was amazed at his knowledge of the building code. In fact, he corrected these architects out of, out of San Francisco numerous times and they agreed with the corrections because of his knowledge and understanding of the code. Also, when we were interviewing him for the building official position, we asked a question about what he would do if he were uh, the building official, what, what, how he would organize the work. And this, this is the honest truth, and I've never had it as I've been in an, in an interview. He said, I'm glad you asked that. Let me explain my plan. And he pulled it out and <laughs> laid out exactly what I had hoped a new building official would do. And I was amazed at, at that. And he's done exactly that. He's incorporated some wonderful um, elements into the division. Um, enhanced customer service and he's doing a great job but while shouldering this challenging load so he, he's a great asset of the city we're grateful he's in our our department grateful he's the building official doing this important work for our city thank you thank you tim um i'll recognize tim first and foremost he's been a um super person to work for and, and very um, everything I've wanted to do he's supported me with um, I haven't worried about I need to ask Tim first because I know if I do the right thing he will he will back me up on it and he has done that so I appreciate the opportunity of this position keeping it in house like we did and um, you know I'm committed to getting the right people in you know in the building department that's why we don't have a plans examiner because we've got to get a good uh, fit um, not just the knowledge but the whole package and so I want to thank the council too and the elected officials for supporting us for the last 11 years all you people have been great and um, supported us and, and it's uh, it's talked about out there how how good we have it in our department as far as the backing of the the, the commissions and councils and uh, so I want to thank Tim and Jim and my wife Kat and all the people I work with Susan uh, she's here to support me thank you because uh, we have a great group over there and so thank you very much for this honor thank you Tim Tim the mayor wants to say something you want Steve to stay up there yeah, no, that's fine. I just wanted to, Steve, I just wanted to give you, offer my appreciation to you uh, as an old and heavy on the old code guy myself. <laughs> uh, I recognize the, uh, the challenges that you, that you work with uh, day in and day out and, and, uh, and dealing with uh, difficult uh, situations and difficult individuals and so forth. So I, I just wanted to say how much I appreciate the job you're doing. I appreciate thank you. that compliment. Thank you. All righty. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Yeah. Susan, you're not leaving. You're staying for the whole meeting. <laughs> Look at Susan. Oh, boy. <laughs> she looked at the mayor. I said it. No, but you can go whenever you want, Susan. All right. Anyway, we appreciate that, and thank you for being here for that. Okay, next we have uh, our citizen comments. This is limited to three minutes. This is We have one uh, public hearing that um, will have comments, citizen comments, uh, specifically for that but this is just for anything else if you have anything else that you'd like to address the council uh, as citizens you have three minutes we'll open that up now welcome hi you know my name Jenna Strobel 4912 Wasatch so Preserve Murray is excited for the possibilities that lie ahead with Murray's downtown redevelopment. We applaud the renovation plans the city has unveiled for the Murray Theater. This theater will contribute greatly to Murray's vision of a vibrant, walkable downtown. Murray citizens eagerly welcome the theater as a valuable entertainment attraction in our midst.
Attending the theater in a walkable community is a powerful way for citizens to develop casual connections that strengthen communities, our sociability. Sociability helps us more fully understand the living situations of our fellow citizens and therefore helps our community to make economic, political, and social decisions more compassionately and responsibly. We encourage the city to promote designs in our downtown redevelopment that inspires such casual connections, chances of interacting with other human beings and feeling connected as one big family in our great city. The Murray's Theater is part of the city block which includes five more of our city's designated historic buildings. The Murray First Ward Church, Carnegie Library, Jones Court, and Vine Street Duplex. I mean, Jones Court is two, and Vine Street Duplexes. This one city block could be argued to contain the most unique and iconic historic structures we have remaining in our quaint downtown. The other historic buildings in the block, besides the Murray Theater, have been out of commission due to being part of a lawsuit. The judge just issued his ruling last Friday. We now look forward to the vibrant to the future opportunities for these historic buildings becoming shining hallmarks of our vibrant downtown. The possibilities for the historic buildings in this city block to create greater sociability in our downtown area are vast. Preserve Murray is ready to work with Murray City and explore the vast opportunities possible for developing this historic block of the Murray Theater and the Murray First Ward Church, creating a hub of sociability, strengthening the connections of our Murray family. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. Do we have anyone else who would like to okay, come on up? And just say your name and your address. Yeah, yeah of course. Um, my name is Rob Roke. I'm actually with uh, the nonprofit NeighborWorks Salt Lake. Um, you guys are probably used to seeing a much prettier representative from here with like Dan Adams or uh, Dave Moffat, but I'm covering from them today. I just wanted to let everybody know uh, Murray City is one of the c cities that we serve. Um, and one of our ongoing projects that we do every year is called Paint Your Heart Out, which is a service project that we do in a couple of different cities. We really want to get more houses in Murray City. And when I say houses, what I mean is we get teams together and we go out and we paint houses for free for um, for homeowners that need it. And that could be somebody that's uh, low income, maybe they're disabled, or maybe they're, I mean, there, there are a lot of factors that we take into mind, but believe it or not, what we really run into every year is it's not a lack of volunteers, because we got plenty of awesome people um, since we've been doing this for 30 some odd years. We need houses. And so if you or your neighbors or anybody knows of a household that needs to be painted, we do it in August. It's August 11th. I've got some flyers here. We have application materials, but um, it's free and it's not a scam. I promise. <laughs> it's it's free, and we want to come out into Murray, especially because we love Murray City, and Murray City's always been such a great supporter of ours. The only other thing I want to mention is that we also have a youth program. Um, it's harder to recruit out in Murray, but it's high school age kids. We do pre-employment, um, and we teach them social skills. We teach them construction skills, all with the idea of getting them into a better job. I got flyers for that too. Um, again, my name's Rob. I'm with NeighborWorks Salt Lake. So thank you for, for letting me talk for a second. Thank you, Rob. We appreciate it. Are there any other comments that you'd like to bring before the council? Okay, thank you. We appreciate both of you for your comments. Uh, we'll close that part of the hearing or uh, meeting. Uh, next, we'll um, go to our consent agenda. And uh, 7.1, consider confirmation of the mayor's reappointment of Karen Daniels as a Murray City hearing officer for a three-year term to expire May 5th, 2021. Mayor Kemp. Thank you. I'm very uh, pleased uh, tonight to uh, be able to uh, ask you to reappoint Karen Daniels as, a, as a, one of our hearing officers. And Karen is here this evening, and most of you, if not all of you, know Karen. She uh, has a lot of experience uh, in, uh, on the Planning and Zoning Commission, as well as uh, uh, the Business Enhancement Committee, uh, and just has been involved in the community for, uh, for longer than I've known her. And uh, so we're very, very fortunate to have uh, uh, Karen be able to, uh, to, to be reappointed as a hearing officer so we can continue to utilize her expertise. 
So with that, I'll ask you to, to uh, consider the reappointment. And Karen, would you stand? Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Are there any questions or we move for a motion? I would move that we approve confirmation of the mayor's reappointment to Karen Daniels as a Murray City Hearing Officer for a three-year term to expire May 5th, 2021. I'll second. Thank you. Jennifer? Mr. Aye. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. 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 Thanks again, Karen. We appreciate all you've done for you all for all the years and your building's almost done. It looks like another couple weeks or so but we we'll appreciate you karen thank you so much for your willingness to serve our city we really do appreciate it okay thank you um the only public hearing uh, uh staff and sponsor presentation to consider ordinance enacting chapter 17.82 of the murray city municipal code related to small wireless facilities tim tingy Thank you, Council. This item was uh, discussed a few weeks ago with the Council in our Committee of the Whole. Um, we talked with you a little bit about it. Um, what has prompted this uh, proposed ordinance are uh, changes in code and, and legislation by the federal government as well as the state. And um, at the, at the uh, state legislation, when that was adopted, they gave a time frame and when they wanted to uh, have that legislation be in place, that time frame is May of this, this month. So I'll talk a little bit about that in just a minute. The Planning Commission did uh, review this. This is a, a zoning ordinance element. Uh, so the Planning Commission did review this on April 5th. They provided a recommendation. The ordinance you see in your packet includes uh, that recommendation. Just real briefly, uh, the elements of the code that I, I want to highlight, it, it, it does acknowledge federal and state law. Um, it focuses on these small wireless facilities in the right-of-way. That's what we're talking about. It's not, not on private property. Um, we, define, we define many of the elements related to small wireless facilities and uh, encourage co-location, which is what I want to talk about in just a minute, consideration of blending, um, their standards including height, and also um, elements related to the right-of-way that if uh, they don't meet certain standards that they can't be located in those areas. Uh, we did receive a uh, public comment just this afternoon. It's from, uh, I believe, the law firm uh, out of Denver, Colorado, Sherman and Howard. They're representing Verizon Wireless. Uh, the person's name was Melissa Karen Reagan. We submitted that to the council. I think you, you received this information. And they had a number of changes that they wanted to see with this ordinance. I do want to say that we've spent a lot of time with our attorney's office uh, reviewing this as well as the planning commission reviewed it. We feel very comfortable with the code as meeting the state uh, requirements. So the comments that they uh, included in this um, included a lot of components related to changes that will make it easier on carriers but are not necessarily conflicts with the state code. So that's one, one um, part of what they're asserting. Additional things relate to the heights and standards that we have in place and how they feel that those standards are to be interpreted. Uh, once again, we feel comfortable with what we have in place. And there are other uh, language uh, components that, uh, once again, we feel very comfortable with our ordinance related to state law and adhering to state law standards. And we've done a lot of uh, research and discussion on that and appreciate GL and his office who've been invaluable in this process. We do have one issue that GL and his staff brought up this afternoon that we really want some time to talk a little bit more about. And it relates to uh, relocation on, on power poles, specifically the city power poles. We want to really evaluate that and make sure that what we have in place is something um, that we can live with, that our power department can be comfortable with it, and we want to sure up that language. So that's something uh, that we want some time to address in the next few weeks where we will get GL and, and the mayor's office and um, our power department together to address that issue and make sure that what we have in place is something that we can live with um, from the city perspective as well as state code perspective. I want to reiterate this isn't prompted by their Verizon uh, comments here at all. It's, it's prompted by our review of, of 
possible scenarios scenarios with lawsuits if if and we want to sure up the language on that so what we're recommending tonight is that uh, we're recommending that you open the public hearing and continue the hearing and allow us to have until june 5th the june 5th meeting where we will continue the public hearing to and allow public comment again at that time uh, but we want some time to address these issues and bring it back to you at that time so that is our recommendation tonight well, thanks tim any questions for tim on this okay tim thank you i'll open it up for um public comment are there is anybody thank you come on if you just state your name and an address that would be great thank you Good evening, Mayor and fellow council members. My name is Nephi Garcia, uh, address 824 Wellington Drive in Kaysville, Utah. I work for Mobility, for mobility Wired. It's been with them for about a year. Uh, we do, we're doing work for Sprint uh, here in the Utah market. And here in Murray, I have maybe six sites, small sales I'm working on within your jurisdiction. Um, I just want to say it's been a pleasure working with your staff and the plan department with Jared and his people. Um, I've met with him and talked about working on this code. I think it's a good code. Um, you know, the gentleman before me had good comments about power. You know, you want to make sure you're comfortable with attaching these onto powers, uh, onto power poles. Um, I've done quite a few of these on Provo Power. If the city wants to talk to Provo Power, they're, they're a good ally to talk to about how it's worked out for them. We also have an agreement in place to rock map power. So it is possible, but every every city has their different, you know, nuances. So it's a, I think it's a little time spent to make sure this fits within you know, the power department of, of Murray City. But overall, just thanks to staff for, for their help in writing this new code. Thank you. Thank you, Nephew. And if you could fill out that form, and thank you so much. Other, other uh, comments on this? Okay. Thank you again. Seeing none, we will uh, close the public comment and bring it to the council uh, to decide what they want to do with this. Did you want to close it or continue the public I'll hearing? I'll continue it. Thank you, Jim. Mm -hmm. Is that the best way to go? Okay. No, I, I like the idea. I, I read the ordinance. My concern was our polls are getting more and more cluttered. And so I was, I looked at it. it seemed like you covered it with the re reference to NESC plus a percentage. Um, but I'm glad we're looking at closer. Um, don't want to compromise system reliability. Don't want to cause any safety issues for our crews that have to climb the poles. Because the more equipment you get on there, the harder it is to to go up one of those things safely. So, okay. Do we need a motion to continue? I, I think so. Yes. I'll make a motion that we continue the consideration of an ordinance enacting Chapter 17.82 of the Murray City Municipal Code related to small wireless facilities. And, and we'll continue that till June 5th, is that correct? June 5th, uh, eight, uh, 28, sorry, <laughs> what year we're in, 2018, thank you. Uh, do we have a do second? We, do we need to make sure that it's open yeah it's it, hearing yeah, is open yeah i left it open i didn't close it jim reminded me of that. i would second that okay anything else joe that we need to do on that okay jennifer aye 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 thank you thank you tim okay we will uh, there's no unfinished business so we'll move on to item 10 uh, new business consider a resolution changing the name of the l clark cushing heritage center to the l clark cushing senior recreation center kim sorensen presenting welcome kim thank you council you may remember we uh, discussed this a couple of weeks ago in council of a whole but as brett um, said we're, we're, we would like you to consider a resolution to change the name of the Heritage Center from the L. Clark Cushing Heritage Center to the L. Clark Cushing Senior Recreation Center. Now to recap, this was a st began as a staff recommendation. Staff believed that the current name does not accurately define or, or give an understanding to what the Heritage Center does or offers. Uh, we have taken this to the Heritage Center Advisory Board and the Parks and Recreation Advisory <coughs> Board. Both of, those, both of those boards gave it a unanimous vote of approval. 
We also surveyed 100 participants at the Heritage Center, and they gave it a majority vote of approval. Now, when I say majority, those that voted against it had other ideas as to what we should change the name. They didn't want to keep the name, but they, they had other ideas for changing it. Uh, the cost to, to make this change would be under $1,000. We would need to change the lettering on our building. There's a sign on 6200 South. We would need, need to change those letters as well. Uh, there's a little bit of office supplies, mainly business cards. Any letterhead or envelopes that we have will use up before we buy new. Should you vote for the name change, the attorney's office would have to update the city ordinances anywhere that it specifies um, L. Clark Cushing Heritage Center. Questions right. of me? Thank you, Kim. Go ahead. Any questions for Kim? No. Thank you, Kim. We appreciate it. And we had a discussion a couple of weeks in the Committee of the Whole regarding this. So if no questions, we'll ask for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution changing the name of the L. Clark Cushing Heritage Center to the L. Clark Cushing Senior Recreation Center. We need a second. I'll second. Jennifer? Aye. 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 Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, we now are the report of the mayor, Mayor Camp. Okay, thank you. Uh, just a couple of things this evening. I want to remind everyone of the uh, Arbor Day celebration this uh, coming Friday, May 4th at noon, uh, beginning at noon at the amphitheater. The program is called Trees Are Terrific for a Healthy Environment. So uh, I thought that was catchy. I uh, don't know who came up with it, but it's good. Uh, we'll be receiving our uh, Tree City USA designation from Brian Cottom, the state forester. Uh, 41 consecutive years so I just want to remind you of that uh, it's a fun event there'll be uh, 10 uh, education sessions as well for for the, the kids that'll be there so it'll be, be a good time we appreciate all the work that goes into that from the Shade Tree Commission as well as the, the Power Department and the Parks and Recreation uh, departments as well also there uh, there uh, are, are going to be awards given to the students that participated in the art contest as part of part of the program. Uh, also, I uh, just want to let you know that the city is participating in the 12th annual Water Quality Fair at Hogel Zoo on May 10th. And um, this event is, uh, there's an estimated 2,000 uh, to 3,000 fourth grade students that come every year from the cities uh, in the surrounding area here to participate and learn about stormwater and how to keep it clean um, because they need, they're, they're learning that what goes downstream is untreated. And, uh, and I think the thing uh, that impresses me about teaching these to these young kids, uh, this as well as the Arbor, the Arbor Day uh, education and these kinds of things, is it seems like our young people today are very, very conscious and concerned about the environment and the future. And uh, so these kind of education programs uh, in the elementary schools, I think, really go a long way in uh, helping um, protect our environment in the coming years. There will also be uh, 10 educational booths up there uh, at the zoo that day. Uh, and uh, I will be there to uh, represent the city and make a few comments. Uh, so just want to make you aware of that. And finally, the Recreation Center, uh, beginning this uh, Sunday, May 6th, will be closed on Sundays throughout the summer. So I want to remind you that in case you get uh, calls from uh, any of your constituents. Uh, we'll reopen on Sundays beginning November 4th. And just to remind you, the reason for that is, is economics. Uh, there's not enough traffic in the rec center uh, on Sundays during the summer to, to justify keeping it open. So that's the decision that the, the staff has, has made. So just want to remind you of that. And that's my report. Thank you, Mayor. Any questions for Mayor Camp? Okay. Thank you. And thanks everyone for joining us today. This meeting's adjourned.